important, Matt. Well, I'll tell you what, Alan, if you watch Tommy Baldwin Jr. down here, each lap, it's like he's almost driving the car with Ward, very animated on top of the pit box. I asked him about 60 laps ago when he's running mid-pack, are you guys okay? Because they were anticipating a very stout piece for this race. He says, oh, yeah, we learned our lesson last year. We led 53 laps. We were crashed out running fourth, so we knew just to save our stuff until the end, because that's when all the big money takes place. Look at Jeffrey Bodine in the 09 car, the 1986 winner of the 500, who many thoughts career ended in a vicious crash here at Daytona back in 2000. Only got five races this season that he's going to run in this car, and he is showing he can still get the job done. This car is owned by James Finch, and after the Budweiser shootout, they dyno-tested, chassis dyno-tested a lot of the cars, and James said, hey, how about putting my car on there? I want to see what I have. And the 09 car had more power than any of them. Go down to fifth. Here comes Michael Waltrip trying to get back into it. Yeah, Michael's got to make this move. Like he's trying everything he can to make his move now. He needs to get with that top group if he's going to have a shot at winning this race again. Rusty Wallace drives on the inside of the 97. Of Kurt Busch gets a great run. That's Michael Walter. I'm sorry, Michael Walter. Yep. That Napa thing looks like the Miller Light thing to me every time I see it. Sorry. Defending 500 winner. Trying to rally back. Got a lot of work to do, and not a lot of time to do it. Robbie Gordon behind him in the Richard Childress 31. That lead group is starting to stretch it out. Dale Jarrett's pushing as far as he can on that gas pedal right now. Six car in line right there. Ten to go, and they come back around. I said earlier, BP, what do you think? They're going to have to start trying to make a moves here with at least four to go, don't you? Oh, yeah, they can't wait till the last lap because Jeff Gordon is going to make that DuPont Chevy very, very wide on that last lap. And the last time by Jeff Gordon ran a speed actually faster than the pole speed. He ran 100, uh, he ran a 48.41. The pole position was 48.43 seconds. Now, so here's where you got the guys making deals. Sterling Marlin, I'm sure, is trying to find out what Ward Burton wants to do. And if Ward Burton will go with Sterling, if he pulls out and makes the move on Jeff Gordon, and so on back and so on back. Everybody's trying to figure out right now who's going to go with who. Two chiefs are talking to other two chiefs, and spotters are talking to other spotters, and drivers are talking to their spotters and saying, hey, go over to this spotter, that 22 car Ward Burton, see if he'll go with me if I pull out. is out. Mm. Gordon was 10th, last lap. Here comes Jeff Gordon. Back to the caution flag. Now we will have a single file restart too. And we'll have a restart inside the final 10 laps. What Jeff Gordon did not want to see. Remember, in 2000, Johnny Benson was leading this race. No one could get by him. Caution flag came out with about eight laps to go, and Jarrett passed him with four or five laps to go to win the Daytona 500. Jeff Gordon is saying, Robbie Gordon, why did you have to crash and bring up the caution flag? Jeff and Robbie, of course, not related tell that by New Hampshire race last year. Yeah, remember, they were the ones that were fighting it out with fenders at the end of the last race of 2001. Now, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> we'll Nobody's be. coming. <laughs> Boy, they blew it. We blew it on that last time. Looks like, you remember I talked about earlier, when the cars get real close to each other in the banking, it makes the car on the bottom loose, and I think that's what happened to Robbie Gordon, PP. He got up there beside Rusty Wallace. There was not enough air on the back of that car to push the car into the racetrack, lost down force, and looped it. Watch this. He goes in the corner. Rusty Wallace is on the outside. Now listen to this. Listen to the engine. Robbie just spun. Robbie just 
Experience. Look. Oh. <laughs> and, and having your eyes closed. Now Kurt oh, Busch up. is coming down pit road. 97 car is in. I guess they decided at four tires that they're going to need four tires to try to make a run to the front. Go ahead, Sean. No, Sean, you got a helmet? Oh. Matt? And they are going to take on four fresh tires. Remember back in the Pepsi 400, back in the mid-80s, Alan, Bobby Allison pulled the same move late in the going. So about 10 laps ago, came in for fresh tires and won the thing. And Jimmy Finnick, who won this event with Bobby Allison, remembers that. So they had nothing to lose. Alan? We'll find out where he restarts and gets set for what should be a dramatic finish to the Daytona 500 when we come back on NBC.